Hello everyone, welcome to a new tutorial presented by the SHRDB. In this tutorial, we are going to learn how to calculate the mode. In the previous tutorial, we've learned how to calculate the mean. Now we are going to calculate the mode. Now the first question we need to ask ourselves is what is the mode? Because for us to calculate, we first have to we first need to have the basics of the thing we are to calculate a programmer is someone who is capable of splitting the uh, the a, a very large step into very minor steps such that the computer can understand the computer is is a, is, an, is something that is not capable of having intellectuality when you say just x to the computer if i just tell the computer x is equal to a plus b the computer is just going to write x equals to a plus b without telling you something like what is a or what is b. The computer doesn't ask questions, it only do what he is being said. So the computer is not very intelligent. Is the programmer is the role of the programmer to place the values or to split the instruction into very minute substance is just such that the computer can understand the integrity of what you are saying if you have a, a simple instruction is is an instruction like um go to the market go to the market for somebody is is, is an instruction which is normal if you just say to, to somebody go to the market just say let's say we take an example let's say you say to somebody go to the market now go to the market is an instruction which is which can be given to somebody i can say to my junior brother go to the market i can say to my junior sister go to the market which she will go to the market without asking me any question she knows the road to the market she knows what she has to buy in the market she knows i why i'm asking her to go to the market maybe it's because there is no food at home or because i don't have a pen so i've already spoken to her about that so she knows everything and when i say go to the market she only executes but if i tell the computer go to the market the computer is not going to understand anything as you said you need to explain the computer to the finest detail that is why you have the um, higher level programming language and lower level programming language the higher level programming language as you are going to see in the introduction if you go to the tutorial done in C in introduction you see higher level programming language the higher level programming language you don't give too much instruction as in low level programming language in low level programming language you are giving excessive instruction to the to the computer for him to execute just a particular information but in higher programming language the compiler in this case for c the compiler is the gnu the compiler is a gnu gcc compiler let's say i do an error here i've done an error you're going to see now the name of the compiler. This is a compiler, a GNU GCC compiler. So this is a compiler which is building and making sure that we are not giving excessive steps to the computer. Else, for normal programmer, you have to be fine and concise in the order you are giving to a computer. So let's come back to the question we ask to the computer. Go to the market. You have a computer in front of you. We tell him, go to the market. The computer needs first to ask you the question where is the money to go to the market the next question is how do i open the door of the house to go to the market the next question is how do i move to go to the market the next question is how do i carry my shoes to go to the market the next question is how do i take a bike to, to go to the market the next question is what is the road to the market the next question is how many what should i buy in the market how should i move in the market all these are much questions that are going to be asked by the computer and you need to tell him in a precise direction so that's the role of programmer so let's come back again to calculate the mode that's what the tutorial is based on calculating the mode 
So let's calculate the mode. Now you said initially that in order for us to calculate the mode, what is the mode? So the mode is the variable which occur the most number of time, which most frequently occurs. The mode is a variable which most frequently occurs. Let's say we have ages, the variable ages. Now, the variable, with the variable ages, we can have one, we can have 12 years, we can have 13 years, we can have eight years, we can have nine years, we can have 12 years, we can have 12 years, we can have 13 years, we can have nine years you see that in this case the mode will be we are going to the the, the age which occur the most number of time in this case will be 12 years 12 is occurring here once so occurring here two, twice 13 years occurring twice and nine years occurring twice so the mode here will be will be um three it will be 12 and occurring three times so how do we do that the first thing is to Ask so the first printf, the first printf, when we print f, we ask the user of our program to enter the total number of terms of the total number of variables he's going to enter. So we say enter the total number of variables. So we enter the total number of R variables. We first compile and see how it does. So this shows an error because you see to the, you see on the debugger. This is a debugger. The debugger expected a semicolon. So you come here, you place place a semicolon. So place that everything is fine. You can now compile. When you compile, and then you come here and you run. So. It shows as such enter the total total number of variables but i want it to be at the center so i'm going to pick black backslash t and backslash t here twice as such now this print f up here and this print f up here are my loops this is what i always use in my c programming tutorials so you see in the c programming tutorials what i use it for I always use it in order to skip one line above and skip the other line below. Else, if you don't use it, you see that the program will not be very clear. Let's say I place it in comment so that you don't see it again. Then cancel the initial program, compile and run. So you are going to have a bad string. Then there's no error because of excess work in my tutorial. So I'm going to have this total number of variables. See that this is not very clear. So I this is why I usually place my printf at top and printf at bottom so that it should be very clear. So now when you have this, enter this on the uh, at the middle now. I will now take the total number of variable and store it in a variable type integer because total number of variable we said that total number of variable is an integer is let's say we have ages here there is one two three four five six seven and eight ages in this case there are going to be eight ages so but normally for all the variables that I want to take what I want I will do is that I'm just going to scan f now when I scan f the next thing I will do is so enter the total number of variables, scan f. When I have scan f, I will store the value that has been entered. I will store the value in integer type. To store in integer type, so use this percentage d. I now place a comma and place in the address. The address is by hand side. We are going to place in the address of a variable that we are going to declare now. So let's declare the variable for storing the total number of uh, terms. So let's say that the total number of terms is going to be stored in the variable in the integer type of variable n. So let's say the variable is n and 0. We equate it first to 0. So now we have this. Now, since we have this, we can store now into the address of n because it's being declared here. So, and we are going to place a semicolon. 
I will go to the next line. So this line stores the total number of variables. In this case, we're going to store it. Now, next line, we are going to try to take the values from the screen. So we first write to the first write to the uh, to the user. Enter the different variables. So you have this. Enter different variables. Go to the next line. So when you enter different variables, now I want it to be placed at the center. I'll place a tab and then I want it to go to the next line. So I'll place it as such the backslash n here. So I'll place backslash tab here as such. So now I go now down and I say that again another printf printf then I use this then I go backslash down I want it to be down I write I want it to be down two times so I use backslash down and I write variable no, I should first tab it from the shift and I tab it again and I write variable so I have this so variable I place two dot here. So variable now I'm requiring you to enter the variable. So this should first have open here. So that is close there, and then I place semicolon. So you have variable I open. I have to place this here. That's no no. So you have this print of t variable when you enter now the I want now to this line is going to take now the variable that you want to enter uh, on the screen. So I'm going to paste in the comment storing how to store the variable storing the variables. So now storing the variables. How would I store the variables? You know that somebody can place even 100 terms and then he wants to store 100 terms so will you store one term by a time that is very fiscally constrained this is why we are going to lose an aspect in programming called loops as you're going to see in the c tutorial where you go and subscribe science video makers and you like for the shrtbb you're going to see the c tutorial the c tutorial we're going to learn loops now Inside loops, what will I what will you do? You do why come in every time you want to use loop, you must make sure that you have a counter because a loop is something which is doing is, is a statement which is doing something a multiple number of times. So you need to have a counter. So at first here, I'm going to initialize a counter here, and usually the counter initializes as I. So I I place semicolon. So the value of the counter will initially be zero. So the next thing I do, I do y i is less than the total number of terms that you entered, and then come out, and then I want you to enter into the loop. So when i is less than n, in this case n is eight, yeah, i is zero. So i is zero is going to enter. So what happened is that I will store the different values in an array. So the first thing to do is that if I want to store an array, I must tell the compiler that there is an array. So to tell the compiler that there exists an array, I must declare it. But where should I declare it? Should I declare it at the top or I declare it here? I will declare it here because I will use n in order to declare it. I want to declare it above here. So my array will be of the type integer. No, my array will be of the type float because the variable can be a floating type. So my array will be of the type float. So we have the float array name is called variable. And then to declare, I'm going to declare it within how many numbers? You say that see that the total number of the terms here will be n so i have to place n in the total number of array then place my semicolon now i'm going to store each values of the arrays which are going to enter 
So what I do is that I'll store them as such. So I come and I say scanf to store. We are going to use the same function scanf. Now, since I've declared the variable as the, the array as being a floating type, then I'm going to now not put a percentage Z, but a percentage F here because it's now no more an integer, but a floating type. So I'm going to put percentage F in place comma and place in the address. In this case, it was the address of N because I wanted the total number of variables to be stored in the variable N. But in this case, I want to the variable should be stored now in the address of the array variable. So I'm going to paste address here of variable. But I want to place n now in the brackets here as such. But I'll instead place i because i is a counter. i is going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 2, 8 times for this case such that it's storing the different values in the array system. So you have this. So you have scanf, this, 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 it will store in the array. So the different values are going to be stored in the array. So this is, this loop was for storing the variables. The next part in which we are going to proceed is in the calculation of the mode we have calculated at first we have calculated we have placed the different values of the variables in with the scanf in the array variable yeah so what happened is that when the person is entering the numbers it's going to be stored in the array now the next part is to calculate the mode and this is the most difficult part of our tutorial so let's be very attentive in this part in this case you have age 12 13 8 9 12 12 13 9 now we can see with that eyes that the mode is 12 but if the number is already very large it's be really difficult that to, to find the mode so how do we do in order for us to find the mode we need a command that is going to count 12 and it when it sees 12 it places it somewhere and count that 12 is coming one time then it count 13 it places 13 somewhere and find compare the number 12 and 13 which one is greater in number since 12 and 13 are both the same it is not going to store anyone but when it's going to come here, it's going to see that 12 is more so we need to count these numbers and then store the value which has the highest value number of counts per each time we count so this seems a little bit difficult, so let's see how to do it. We come here, we do this is calculating the mode. So, how do we calculate the mode? The first thing in the calculation of the mode is that we are going to place the first counter which is going to assign which which is going to be for the assignment of the different values that our counter we already know is i we are going to have another counter which is going to be used for the comparison so calculating the mode we first start by placing the y loop now we first need to know that there will be a first counter. The first counter will be I. The first counter will be I. And the first, this counter is used to store the different values here. So we have the first counter which will be involved to store the different values. To have a first, a first row, a first column where you have the values. Now, you have another counter int j equals to zero this second counter 
will be used in comparing the stored value in order to count them. So the first counter is in order to store the different values. The second, va the second counter is for comparison. So this counter will be used to visualize if the first and the one, two, three, four, five and the fifth term are equal. This second counter will be used for comparison to see if the first counter and the fifth counter are equal. See, if it sees now that they are going to be equal, then it is now going to create now um, a, it's now going to tell the machine that there are two numbers of 12. So that's the second counter, the role of second counter. So the role of second counter is for comparison. The first counter is just for storing. Second counter is for comparison. So you can place it here. Here is for comparison of numbers. And here is, here is for storing the numbers. So we have already stored the number. So it will be a reference point. It's better to say a reference point for comparison. It will be a, this is for comparison. So it's a reference point for comparison. Now you will need again another counter. We have already seen that you have a reference point for comparison. These are the values that have been stored. 12, 13, and all that. Now, this other one is trying to visualize if this this first term and this uh, fifth term are having the same value. If this first term and this fifth term are having the same value. That's the rule of J. Now, there is the need of another counter again called count. We are going to say count. So that count is going to take now the number of times 12 is occurring. J is used to see if 12 is occurring twice or, or, or not. So that J is used for comparison, it's used to visualize if they are occurring twice. Now, there is another counter which is needed to take the value that J says that it occurs twice or thrice. So we are going to use another counter again called count. So this counter, we are initializing it first to zero. So this counter will take the number of occurrence. So this counter is going to take the number of occurrence. So we have this reference point of comparison, comparison of number, and we have this counter to take the number of, comp of, of occurrence. Now, again, we need another counter. Now, you see that this counter is used to count number of 12. It's going to count that 12 is 3 times, 13 is 2 times, 8 is, um, 8 is 1 time, 9 is 2 times. This is a rule of count. Now, we are going to have again another counter which is going to take the maximum value of count. So, this other one is going to be called max. Count as such. So it will be max count. It was going to take the maximum value. So we initialize it first to zero. So we are going to, in order to, to take the value of count and place in maximum count, we are going to compare if max count is if um, count is greater than max count. When the count is greater than max count, then max count is going to have the value of count as we're going to see um, later. So the next one now, since you have the max count, it will be easy now for us to know which is a term by visualizing again this comparison number having is having been stored by J. So we are going to use again this J to find again the last one, which is going to be int max variable. That max variable is a one we are going to find for the mode, is what is going to be the mode in this question. So we first initialize it to zero. So we have max variable, 
max variable in this case now is 12 so what is going to happen is that is that it's going to count that 12 is occurring three times and now uh, when it's occurring three times now it's going to give you now the variable to be 12. so let's see so this is storing max value of count storing the mode so when you have this answer you have the mode so let's start we are going to before we, we declare a while loop the first thing to do is to first initialize it back to zero to zero because yeah when n enters it's going to come out at seven so we are going to first initialize n back to zero as such now when you so when you have initialized back i to zero now continue by saying why why is it you say i is less than n so n is the total number of terms that's going to be entered so we'll say why i is less than 10 we are going to initialize now the counter because the counter needs to be initialized first the counter needs to be initialized first you place your counter initialize it to zero but you already have it here so you can initialize back to zero or you can remove it so you have counter counter is zero here so now it's already initialized as zero so the next thing to do is that it's better to place counter zero here because it's going to turn and have the same value we place counter zero when we place counter zero you then enter another while loop this while loop will be used for comparison and it's going to contain j why j is less than n now open so now why j is less than n what will you do so this j that we said here is for comparison this i was for the reference point what happened is that i first enters and is the value is first zero since the value is first zero and zero is less than number of terms you entered in this case is going to be uh, eight terms one two three four five six seven eight it's going to be eight terms so zero is less than eight is going to enter since you are going to enter now your loop you are going to take the you initialize your count again to zero even though it said up there but it's going to use as it's going to go down so when you initialize to zero then you come down and you say j less than n you see that the value of j here is zero so it's going to enter inside the loop so j less than n equals um, zero zero is going to enter now when it enters you're going to do some comparisons the first comparison we say if variable if variable i is equal to variable j then proceed as such so if variable i equals to variable j then do count equals to count plus one so or you can still use the statement count plus plus so what happens actually when i enters with zero it's going to have count zero here j also is zero it's going to enter now we are going to compare variable zero variable zero is the position zero here are you saying it's contain you say variable zero is 12 now you see at this same position is um, j variable zero so what is happening is that this function the second the second statement is trying to make sure that you count the value as the first step so what happens is that i is zero j is zero as it enters you have count equals to count plus one this first count is zero so plus one it now makes that count should take a value of one so 
when it proceeds, when you read the computer is going to read all through the first term is going is going to count 12 as one first so the next thing is that you come again on another if loop you don't write an else if you write an else then it's going to forget about this statement so it's better to write another if loop so write again another if loop and in that if loop you say you say if count is greater than <clears throat> now you come back here you said that you have you initially know that you had max count the max count is, is going to be the total the the maximal number of counts you are going to have the most frequent count so now if this count is greater than max count then i ask the program to do this it is going to say that count is equal to max count semicolon and so there is an error first here count this count here is not supposed to be because when you want to assign values in computers you don't assign you assign the value that is inside the computer to the value you wish so it's supposed to be contrary as such so i want that count enters into the variable max count so this is count here now if count is greater than max count i want max count to be equal to count so this value which is stored as one is going to enter here and now i also want that max variable because i initialize max variable max variable is equal to my max variable is now going to be variable i because we said that variable i was a reference point or a storing we see that here you are trying with this loop you are trying to compare the first element and see how many times the first element is going to occur here we are going to see in some periods to come so we are going to write variable i so it's going to be variable i here I place a semicolon so let's see what this loop is meaning the first thing is that i equals to zero it enters now the next thing is that count equals to zero is ma is maintained it then enters j equals to zero it also enters in, in this loop what is happening is that if variable zero is equal to this zero what happens is that it comes down to the first term we find that 12 is 12 because 12 will be equal to 12 what is being stored in variable zero and variable zero are both 12 so since so is equals to 12 now take this count you place one in it see now place one in it you now compare one is greater than zero which was max count here now you have it you now go inside a loop we now say that max count will contain a value of one so it says that now the, this max count will be one and the max value will be 12 so when you are at this position, the computer sees that 12 is the mode. So the next thing is that it comes to the 13, number 13. What happens? To visualize the next position, it then comes down. In order to visualize the next number and count it, you need now to come down here and add j equals to j plus 1. Yeah, or you can still write J plus plus. It can, it can be easy. So you write J equals J plus one in order to go to the next number. So when you have J equals J plus one here, it's going to now take the next value of J will be one. You now go up, but one is still less than eight. So it still enters. Now you see variable. Now you see that variable. Um, zero because I is still zero, and now variable one. You see 12 is not 12 here 12 is 13 instead here so they are not equal so it's not going to enter in this if loop and since it's not going to enter in this if loop you have count greater than is count greater than max count here count is equals to max count so it's not also going to enter in this loop and it's going to descend without doing anything now going to the next portion you have again is going to go down j equals j plus one 
Now, J plus 1 there is will be 8 in this case. It's going to compare again. It's not going to be similar at all that. It's going to visualize, count, and then give the different values. So, it's going to do again. It's going to continue. You have for 12. It's going to continue again for 13. Um, it's going to visualize and compare 12 with 8. It's going to compare 12 with 9. And then compare 12 with 12 again here on the fifth position. So, when it comes on the fifth position, when J is equal to 5, it's going to take again max count equals to count and max variable equals to variable I. Are you seeing? Now, it then comes and compare again with the seat position and see that it's still. so the to max the max count for for 12 for the 12 variable will be 3 so max count will be stored and the 12 variable will be and the max variable will be stored now the next thing is that is you will now visualize the, 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 the coding will now visualize for the number 13 for how do it visualize for the number 13 what happened is that it comes to the next one j um, to the next one i equals to i plus one so to visualize the number 13 what you need to do is that you come out of the y um, j is that you then write i equals to i plus one i place a semicolon or you can still write i plus plus or you can still write so you can still write i plus equals to one so these are the different things you can write in order to represent i equals to i plus one so what happened is that it's going to now go to the next term the next term now is 13 and it's going to compare and visualize if 13 is found everywhere here. so you have 13 it goes here you find the first term with the first term we when i equals zero in order to place back j such that j should be on the first term you need to come back again up here and to make sure that every time it's come out of the loop j must be equals to zero as such so every time it's going to come out it's going to come up again j will be equal to zero and visualize count and it will compare again now the second term the second term here in this case is 13 we we'll compare the second term with the first term which is 12 and visualize if they are the same they are not the same so it will not count the second term and the second term is 13 so the second term and the second term is 13 is visualized you count one time you count that 13 is one time it now visualize the third term not the same not the same not the same not the same and then visualize this So what happens is it's going to count, count. Now you see that when it counts here for the first time, it sees it comes here. So count is equals to one. But you know that for twelve the max count was three. So count great is not the one is not greater than three. So thirteen is not going to replace twelve in that case. So this is how all the procedures occurring within this loop. So the main procedure for calculating the mode is occurring within these loops this y i less than n and y i this and with the if statement so from here you can come down and then print the loop you can print the uh, mode and then print now the value of the max the, the occurrence so i will say printed bracket so I want to write this on my uh, on, on, on my screen so that the user sees it. So I write printf the value of the mode is I paste two dot. So I want it as it should be down by two lines and then I tap it to the center. The value of the mode is I space it and then i will bring out i know that i've stored max variable as what i stored max variable as an integer so i'll come out and i'll bring it out as an integer with the percentage z then i come out and then i bring the value of max variable this is max variable yeah so i bring the value of max variable out and i place it here when i come again to another printf I write 
then go to another line then tab it all right occurrence so the number of times or i write even frequency frequency of the mode so from here i'll have the frequency the frequency of the mode i'm going to place down the value of max count max counts above here was stored as an integer so to bring out max count i'm going to place this and then i'll write percentage d then come out and write max count max count here so i now do it and then i do so this is all my code within some lines with much spaces so all this code in order for you to calculate the mode can take you 16 lines why there are many spaces around so they can be you can take at most 30 lines to write the the code for the mode as such so now, let, now let's compile so we have an error on line 40 you see debugger 40 and 42 are the main ones you have in the error so coming to line 40 we visualize the problem they say error variable undeclared undeclared first function variable did you so actually the problem comes they said error variable undeclared so this variable is because of variable so it's not the same so in order to correct this i'll just come and write a so you see the importance of the debugger in c in c in code blocks compiler now we have variable here um, in code blocks ide environment of development we have variable here you now come you see the next line 42 you see error expected a token here so number 42 is here so they expected that i should pay a semicolon here so let's see again there's no error added so let's compile so no error is shown so zero error zero one zero minute and that showed with blue line this show no error is correct so we run So before I continue, I first have to change and I place this. So I compile and I run. Now we are going to use the same example that we have taken in this question. Let's say ages, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now enter the total number of variables. The total number of variables in this case is 8. We enter by pressing enter now enter the different variables now to enter the different variables so the first thing i'll do that i'm going to change and make sure that variables is closer to it so i won't skip it with two lines but instead with one line it's nice to be a bit synthetic and proper so i have eight variables i enter so you see that this is much more clear I come and I visualize again this question. This question, we said that H, we had 12, we had 13, we had 8, we had 9, we had 12, we had all this. So we write 12, we enter by a space, 13, enter with a space, we have 8, enter, we have 9, enter, we have 12, enter with a space, we have 12, enter, we have 13, enter, and we have 9. So we press enter. So now you see again, you enter, you enter, you enter. But the problem is that the code is not continuing. Realize that when I'm pressing enter many times, it's not ending. So I already see the position or the location where there's a problem in my code. So anytime I press enter, it's just going down. This is because in my code, I've forgotten to place an end to the for loop, which is taking to the while loop, which is taking the values. See very well, you have i is less than n, scan f, but I'm not placing a limit to it. So how will I place a limit? I'll place a limit by increasing the values of i by one. So i will be equals to i plus one. Let me come down. 
see that from here I, when i increase i equals i plus one i will now have here is one then we'll take two then we'll take three then we'll take four then when i write to eight it's going to stop and going to come out of a loop and continue with this next loop so that was the reason of the error and compile again and we run so we still write our eight now come here and we see the ages that were above here so we have 12 years we have 13 years we have nine years no it's first eight years we have eight years we have nine years we have 12 years we have 12 years we have 13 years and we have nine years so this is exactly the same 12 12 13 13 8 8 9 9 12 12 12 12 13 13 and 9 you can press enter so now when you press enter you have the value of the mode is 12 and the frequency is 3 that's exactly what you see here so you have 12 13 8 9 12 12 13 9 so this is a program which have helped you to find the value of the mode in order to simplify your statistic work. From here, thanks for your kind attention and hope you subscribe and like the videos on Science Video Makers. Thank you.